My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how-tos, and reviews. And in today's video, we'll be doing a detailed review on this brand new Diamond Sea equipment trailer. This is not going to be a big exposed Diamond Sea trailer, um, but rather we're just going to be uh, looking at the imperfections, uh, just minute details that uh, kind of been lost uh, through the trailer. Uh, I don't think this is um, specific issues just to Diamond Sea. I think across the trailer manufacturing world, we're going to see these uh, flaws. And uh, like I said, we're gonna get really detailed, really look at all the details, and I'm not trying to bash on Diamond C. I think this is a great trailer, um, but I just wanna show everybody what this trailer looks like really in depth. This is kind of the, the video I would have liked to do or the inspection I would like to do uh, when buying this trailer. I uh, really didn't have a chance to look at this trailer too much um, in purchasing it. When I picked it up from the dealer, brought it home, um, and this trailer has less than 100 miles on it. So this is kind of a, a really detailed look. Uh, crawl underneath, we'll get underneath, look everywhere else, and uh, take a really detailed look at this trailer and give you a better idea of what you can expect when you're buying a Diamond C. So a little bit of details on this trailer. This is a dual or a tandem 7,000 pound axle for uh, 14,000 pound capacity. Uh, you can upgrade the rating on these up to 15.9 with the gooseneck. Um, so that just depends on the, your tow vehicle, on what you decide to do. You do have to do that on a new trailer from the manufacturer or from the dealer. And then this is a 24 foot with, a, I believe, a two foot dovetail. And then we've got uh, the two foot uh, max ramps, or they're not the max ramps, but they're uh, extra large ramps on this one. And uh, a few other things like we've got a, a 36 inch step up here a few minor upgrades uh, we also have the tire up on the front and a winch plate but i'll do a completely separate video really going into detail on the specs on this what i picked this up for the price i paid what the msrp is on it and how to go about buying a, a new trailer like this but uh, let's get to the inspection video and show you all of the flaws okay one of the really neat things on this trailer specifically that no one else has in the market is this fleet neck engineered beam so uh really cool technology of this and, and honestly it just it looks freaking nice i mean it's not the patched together i beams like everybody else so that's a really cool feature um no complaints with that whatsoever up on the front here we've got this uh bulldog bx hitch so this is supposed to have a little bit more of a funnel allows you on the hitch there um one dislike i have about this is the chains are right where the lever's at, and so I do kind of worry about those getting caught up, going around corners, um, kind of get snagged in there. These uh, bolts up front here, one's really long, one's short. I don't know if that's adjusted right, so I'll need to go through and adjust that and make sure that's all working right. The trailer has about 100 miles on it, uh, hasn't towed anything yet, so I need to go through those things. Um, while we're up front here by the chains, um, this cable was just kind of dangling, and it did not have uh, the, the clip on there, so I need to add that. Um, really, I think these these chain, these cables are just junk. I, I like the zip away system um, with the accordion style cable. They're they're really nice and they just keep tucked away. And then when you have cables like this, they just get snagged. So again, little stuff. This is pretty average for most trailer manufacturers. Um, with this um, chain, uh, it's a little bit smaller than the other gooseneck trailer I tow. Um, and we'll have to do a comparison side by side uh, with this uh, gooseneck trailer and the other one. The other one's a uh, dump trailer, so it's not really the, the best apples to apples, but we'll kind of look at the different uh, similarities and differences, I guess. So but these chains were a little bit on the smaller side from what I could tell. I think that's it up front here. Um, this spare tire holder is awesome. I think this is really, again, uh, ahead of the rest of the market, really ingenious and uh, it's out of the way but also super convenient you just pull this little pin out and then this whole thing pivots on the back there and drops down it's a really nice feature i'm not sure if that's an upgrade with the winch kit back here um, but it is a really nice thing um, one thing i was super impressed with was the cabling so we've got several of these uh um, junction points i guess this isn't a junction but we've got these little pieces all throughout and uh, just really clean cabling really clean grommets and uh, really impressed with that we've got this right way group um, that's probably your your uh, safety battery for your 
Um, that's for your breakaway switch, I'm sure. Okay, next up while we're up front here would be this toolbox. Again, really impressed with this toolbox. Um, specking out different trailers, looking at other um, trailer sales companies, and this was one of the better boxes. And uh, I noticed that there was a little bit of a, somebody took a grinder here and ticked this away. And I think that was intentional, and I think that that's awesome as you're filling along the edge here. You can easily fill that spot and then grab in there. It is hard to see from here, so the little notch makes a big difference. So far, this is working pretty well. I've seen these go bad and not work well, so we'll see how long that works. Um, this is adjustable as well, and I've heard of these breaking on, I'm not sure if that's Diamond C or other manufacturers, but these sometimes are a, an air point. And then this is a actually a curved lid on these, which is supposed to just help uh, it keep its structural rigidity, but it probably also allows them to use thinner material, which this feels, feels pretty thick, but it probably allows them to use thinner material and maintain um, good structure. Um, the struts on this also very sturdy and strong. And I guess as we're getting into this, we're, we're pointing out more uh, pros than cons. Um, and there are a few, like I said, imperfections, but for the most part, really, really impressed with this trailer and uh, the build quality. So here's a look at that wiring harness. Um, all throughout the trailer, they've got these uh, junction points where it looks like they just plug into each other and allows them to build the whole trailer and then put the wiring in. And you can see that they, they build the whole trailer, powder coat it, get all that done. They powder coat this and then these little tabs, they pop up and, and stick behind there. So I guess that brings us to one of our, our flaws. And I don't know a better way to do this, so I, I don't blame them. But when they pull up these tabs, um, the powder coating on the backside usually breaks. And so you would do have a place that we could potentially have rust back in there. Um, you know, what, what do you do? Uh, it's, it's inevitable, I think. Um, looking at this toolbox again, this thing is is massive all the way across. We do have um, little um, little holes in the bottom to let water out if any water gets in. And then also looks like there is a place for a cabling to go through here, place for a grommet there. If you were to have a battery going here, whether you had a battery for a winch or any other components. Um, here's an area that I was a little bit disappointed in. Um, when they when they built this box and put this together, this area didn't lay flat for whatever reason, and they've got a pretty booger weld. Well, I'll show you on the bottom side right there. We blew through a weld here. You can see light through there, and then this whole area looks like there's just some contamination in the paint process. That uh, not the best coverage in here, and then the really bad coverage right here, and. Uh, some some rust spots, but a lot of this is uh, is dirt too. A lot of this brown stuff is dirt. Um, so this trailer has not had really time to rust, but I do foresee some potential rust potential for rust in here. Again, here's kind of a corner point where not the cleanest cuts, um, but it shouldn't really affect structurability uh, necessarily. This lid is super firm and uh, almost hard to close. I think as it breaks in, it'll actually be perfect. It won't won't get sloppy as it gets old. So here's an area in the powder coating process that looks to me like there was some sort of oil or residue or something on here that prevented a good good coat on here and it or, or it could have been simply water water was dripping down right here and this was the low spot of the trailer something here caused the coating not to, to attach as well same with under here um, just kind of flaking or it could have been even after the coating was done maybe it, it got rained on or something I just find that rather odd. And then here's that spot in the toolbox that just really got jacked. And I don't even know how. I mean, it's just all goobered up. These welds, oh, they were obviously trying to fill this gap and attach this. But for whatever reason, this got pushed way in. If you look on the other side here, there's no gap. So this is the other underside of the toolbox. And you can see it's just a lot closer, uh, tighter clearances. And it doesn't have that a huge weld gap in there okay and this is the again the fleet neck engineered beam and the eqt so the engineered beam is supposed to save you some weight eqt is their uh their base equipment trailer they have an lpx which is a heavier duty and i'll we'll show you the frame underneath but there the, this is definitely not the most heavy duty equipment trailer even though it is a 14,000 pound equipment trailer um, it does have these uh, drock legs haven't really used these but those all seem to be functioning pretty well. And then you can see here, they've just bolted this on. Again, a little bit of shifting actually on this. Maybe that bolt needs to be tightened, but you can see where that, after they powder coated that, that has shifted. 
So overall, the exterior really, really nice, clean. We got welds everywhere. We got grease circs. All this stuff to, through here. We got a tube for the to tie the two jacks together. These are, I believe, uh, dual 12k jacks, which was another nice thing that I was looking for. That's one one upgrade you really get when you go with a gooseneck over a bumper pull is you get dual jacks usually, and they're usually 10 or 12,000 pound jacks instead of some of the the single jack bumper pulls are only 7,000 pounds. I'm not sure what the EQ line comes with, but as far as the competitors go. So again, coming up this uh, this beam here, fully welded all the way up. Um, I'm not a welder, but these don't look like the best welds. I, I don't believe you're supposed to have a, such a hump. There's a very big ridge. You can see here we've got some overlap. Um, I don't think that's the best penetration but again, I'm not a professional. Any professional YouTuber welders on there? Give us a comment. And then let's uh, hop up top here. If we look inside on this engineered beam, um, we just have little spot welds. We just have like a little one inch section every 10 inches or so, just uh, spotted through there. So here's a look at the spare tire from up top. Um, and this top area is pretty, pretty flat, pretty flush. You could put an upper deck up here, and this trailer, would, this tire would sit underneath the upper deck. I wanted to put a toolbox up here, but there's not really a, a great spot for one. I could put one up there in the the neck portion, but it's kind of far away to put chains in. And then this uh, winch area, I guess, would be a good place to put chains. But I was hoping to find some sort of box that I could put stuff in without taking up the bed space. But the tr the tires, while we're on that subject. I did upgrade these from the the dealer, the trailer dealer. These are 14 ply. It comes with 10 ply, I believe. And then I had them throw on the black rims while I was doing it. And uh, I, I think the silver looks awesome. This is the this is just a trailer they spec'd out. They had uh, in stock. I, I uh, picked it up, and they uh, they replaced this one. It's on uh, their replacements on order, and they're not uh, Diamond C can't produce or can't even start production until I think he said June. So uh, they're they're way way behind right now on new trailers or producing. So if you if you want a diamond C, you probably need to go find a trailer manufacturer that has one in stock. But uh, yeah, tires 14 ply upgraded that. Um, and uh, this this winch kit is something that my trailer dealer specced out, and I think this is awesome. I I'm thinking about getting a receiver hitch with a winch on it, so I can uh, move it around from vehicle to vehicle and also put it in here. Um, but I may even just you know get a cheap Harbor Freight winch and throw it up top here throw a battery in the box I think that would be a pretty slick operation and uh, you know like I said they've got looks like they missed actually a they missed a grommet right here but I uh, I can run cabling down through here down into the the box down there so that brings us back to the driver's side okay, and the one thing I'm a little bit disappointed with as well is this jack right here it, it seems a little bit gritty here we can look inside the handle here we can see little flakes of stuff well that's not what I'm talking about I guess here's one thing again wear points this is gonna sit in here day in and day out the angle on this is not the best and that's why that's rubbing so bad um, but when I was using this it really feels gritty and I'm not sure if it's just brand new and hasn't been used but I, I think I'm gonna throw some grease in here and hope that that sounds better with use. Yeah, it's just, it's really loud. I guess just in comparison, the PJ I've been using Maybe it's just broken in. You know, it's a couple years old now. It just doesn't have this feeling. We've got this upgrade. This is a 36 inch step. You can get like, I think a foot step or maybe 18 inches and then you can get 36. Again, this was an upgrade. Um, really nice, really easy to step up onto here. These low, low profile uh, equipment trailers are not super difficult to get onto the decks, but that just makes it uh, that much easier. 
Um, as far as the pine boards, well, they are tucked underneath up there. No real big flaws or complaints there. Um, the deck all looks nice. Um, they do have marks on the tra on the trailer. Um, I don't know if those will wash off, but you, wherever they put the screws in, they marked them and then ran a string line across and then snapped it and screwed them in. And looking underneath the the screws look pretty straight and they look like they've pretty they're pretty well bedded in there. Um, and then they've got some overlap on here. So I think, yeah, we got 10 foot and 12 foot. So I'm assuming that they had to cut them down to 10 foot and 12 foot lengths. So we have a, just a alternating overlap there. I'm not sure, I've never had a 24 foot. I think these are 20 foot in length. Well, 22 foot, sorry. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. 10 plus 12 is 22. So we got 22 foot flat deck here. I'm not sure if you can even get um, pine boards in that length, but uh, I wish they weren't overlapping like that. But I think that I'm not hugely concerned about that. That's just a, something I've noticed. Um, these are the lighter duty fenders, which they're still pretty heavy duty. Um, and uh, so they're not the drive over fenders, they're the bolt on fenders. Um, and there is an upgrade to a heavier duty gauge still you can do on the fenders. Um, and this came with the stake pockets and the rub rails and 4D rings, which all looks great to me. I am thinking about getting some inserts with the uh, D rings so I can move those around. Um, I wish they would have put the pipe in here uh, in between. And I think this being the lower model, the LPX might come with that, but this one probably does not um, unless you upgraded that. Uh, another feature that I think is really nice they add is the grease cirques in the suspension here. Um, this is, a, I believe, a, a slipper spring suspension underneath here. So we've got the slipper string on the back there. And then we've got the 7,000 pound lipper axles. And these have the, the self the, the self adjust and the easy lube hubs. So we uh, lube it right here and the, the brakes should be self adjusting. Again, 14 ply upgrade. And then we have the two foot um, diamond plate dovetail. It's not really the steepest dovetail, um, but I think when you're loading a vehicle, just that little bit of round over will help uh, prevent you from hanging up. And, you know, you're only probably saving two inches right here, but I think that really helps with your angle. I guess while we're here, let's uh, let's drop one of these down. So I, I chose to go with uh, one of the specific things I was looking for was the the drop ramps, the the folding ramps, and I'm pretty impressed with these. These do slide over. If you need to do something narrower, uh, they don't go super narrow, and they're really not too bad to lift up or slide over. One thing you do have to be careful with these is these bars, if they get caught with your equipment, you can pretty easily bend them, um, but having them mounted this way is perfect, so it kind of holds them up in the air. I've seen other trailers where those drop to the ground. And they, um, when the trailer dips, when you put the equipment on it, they, they bend them. So that's a pretty good setup on there. And that would be pretty easy to replace too if you ended up bending these. Um, just pull the pin here, get a new bar that length, drill two holes, and you're good to go. Uh, this is an upgrade, a two foot with the expanded metal. Pretty, pretty hefty. Um, looks like a two inch, two by two um, square tubing. And, uh, what is this, probably four inch channel. Um, pretty good setup and pretty good with the drop legs would help with equipment loading so it doesn't lift the vehicle off the ground. So again, on the, on the surface here, I mean, everything looks really, really nice. Um, we have the, the traction cleats and the dovetail as well. Oh, here's a pretty big flaw. You can see we've got a huge spot that got missed with powder coating and obviously behind this pin got missed as well. And in these areas, I mean, that got missed, this got missed. Um, these are high traffic areas anyways. You're probably gonna trip off powder coating and it's gonna start to rust. But with those high traffic areas, you know, again, D-rings too. With these high traffic areas, you're moving chains through there and stuff. As long as you're actively using these trailers in those rusty spots, um, you're gonna keep the rust away just by continually rubbing those areas and keeping the, the rust at bay. So let's get a little bit nitpicky on the back here. Um, when it comes to these trailers, I tend to see them with dual lights on the rear. Um, it looks like this light is actually mimicking a brake light or a, a driving light. I don't know if, they, if that was required to be legal. Um, I would love to see these with double lights on each side, two blinkers on the right and two blinkers on the left. 
um, but I can see why they didn't do that. We've got these springs here for the folding ramps and they'll slide back and forth. So we're gonna have wear along here. And if those were next to a light, they're gonna bust that light out. So there's not really room back here for that. And it's also part of the reason that these sliders don't slide all the way over more is the, the these are DOT required as well, these three lights in the middle. And there's just not room for it. And if you were to slide over, there's you're gonna break these up. So I think it's kind of weird they don't have more than one blinker back here. If your blinker goes out, you're gonna lose you know, if a bulb goes out in that one, you're, you've lost both of them. But I thought that was just a, an interesting thing. Um, again, springs back here, not super great coated, but moving components, those are gonna get busted off the powder coat. And I think that pretty well covers the top here. Um, looking underneath. Um, so back here, we've got screws here and here, and this is only I want to say that's 10 inches apart, so these are pretty narrowly spaced, and I think that these these are about every 10 or 12 inches for the first little bit here, and then once we get over on this end, I think that it starts spreading out more, and we'll look underneath again, but you can see here what our spacing is underneath. Let's, uh, let's pull the floor jack out and uh, go take a deeper look. Okay, here we are on the front end of the trailer. We've got the end of these boards and we've got about four or five six inches away from the edge there and then we're well we're pretty this one's about 12 inches and then we we bump up to probably about 16 inches which I think is pretty standard in the industry so we're 16 16 16 16 and then we're back down to, I mean this is like 10 12 inches 10 12 and then look here here's where they overlap these are super close together and then we're um, like eight inches, 10 inches, back to like five, six inches, and then we're 12. Okay, and then we do open back up. So 16, 16, 16. And then we come back down to like 10, 10 inches, 10, 10. And then here on the end, we've got the, a C channel in here um, with the, that's holding in our, our pine boards. And then here we've got our dove. So as far as the powder coat underneath here, really pretty impressed, um, but we still have a few flaws where it's just not perfect. And you know, overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Here you can see where that dovetail is welded. Um, not, the, not the prettiest welds in some of these spots. I'm not sure where factory and um, where factory welding ends and uh, human welding begins and, and what the differences are in quality. And then again here we've got the screws pretty well centered. It looks like they missed this one, but for the most part all of these screws look like they're well well done and honestly in the perfect location. And doing the string line probably really helps with that. Here we've got the pin for the folding ramp hold down. And then I thought this was pretty cool too. We've got a little deflector flap underneath here for your sorry it's hard to see we got this little deflector for this light so any debris kicking up I uh, don't damage the back side of that light so that's pretty nice and the, the wiring I mean I am super super impressed with the wiring looks like they heat shrunk this and but these are all look like they're pre-built wiring kits which uh, looks like they're really easy to um, install for them oh look here's another plate Again, not the, not the best coverage behind there. Uh, there's where our three little bulbs are. But they're all, it's all this plug and play, really easy to wire. And this is much, much better than my enclosed trailer. They have the dang vampire clips. Here's our plug and harness. And everything zip tied, up tight, out of the way. Really pretty clean. Again, here we're back to the dovetail. So if I had all the time in the world at the trailer dealer, this is what I would do. I'd crawl under the trailers and look at them one by one and see who has the best trailer, who makes the best trailer. Here we've got another harness going into our our lights back here. This is our license plate light. Still need to get this trailer registered. Like I said, this only has about 100 miles on it. And here is our trailer wiring. Got these little clips for these. Got our little bracket up here to hold this in place. All the wires tucked up here pretty nicely. So we got uh, wires going to this axle. So we got brakes on there. 
here's the back side of that pivoting bolt we've got another set of brakes right there and so it looks like these are yeah see these are fully welded they're welded up that side not welded on that side so looks like they only welded on the okay I'm not I'm not too terribly sad about that I was looking at the front end here and I was looking this direction and all I saw was just a weld on the bottom and a weld on the top and I thought they were skimping pretty hard but then looking at this um, they fully welded the other side so that's pretty good okay here's something that um, a little bit disappointed me so it looks like we've got six inch channel on this so this upper upper deck is on six inch channel and then they've added some three inch channel for structural rigidity and they stopped it about six inches shy of the leaf hanger there and both uh, Matt with uh, Off the Ranch, Demo Ranch, and Andrew Kamatra, they've both had trailers that have snapped right in this very spot. In fact, I believe it was always on, for whatever reason, it was always on the passenger side, and this allowed for leverage. So here we've got leverage in the suspension pushing on the bottom of this channel, and here we've got the same leverage pushing right here, and so it, what it causes is it causes a stress fracture either up through here or up through here. So I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't push this through and tie it in with this. Um, I don't know if that would help or if that would just push that stress fracture out to here, but I do think that this is a, a point for failure. And uh, am I going to see a failure in this? Probably not. I think both those trailers on both those YouTube channels were probably 15, 20 years old. Um, I would love for this trailer to to last me that long um, and I, I really think it will I, I think that looking at the quality of the paint um, again there's a few spots where, where it got missed um, but overall it's pretty good it's gonna rust some but I think any trailer that gets used outdoors is gonna see that so again just just something to, to be mindful of again not trying to to just bash diamond see or say they're completely wrong just just simply I'm just observing. Uh, you know, there's a quote of inspect what you expect, and I'm just inspecting this trailer and seeing seeing what it has and seeing if it meets those expectations uh, that have been put out there. And, uh, you know, some things are impressing me, and some things I'm like, oh, you know, I, I feel like that's average. I feel like they, they, they could have been above average in those areas. So, yeah, as far as um, you know, everything back here, the, honestly, this alone, powder coating all this, I'm impressed by that. I don't think that my Spartan enclosed trailer is like that. Um, I'll have to look at the PJ dump trailer and see how well they did the underneath. But I, I, I think Diamond C, from what I've heard, from what I'm seeing right now, probably has the best paint or coating in the industry as far as trailers go. And you can see it's still not perfect. So uh, yeah, again, just looking at a few imperfections. Um, on the underside here, you can't see that they use some uh, live edge boards. Um, everything on the surface is totally fine. So these are just the very raw edges. And you can see a little bit back here where it was damaged. Um, I, I'm not too worried about that. Again, I think that uh, if I were building trailers, um, yeah, as long as you got that down, facing down, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Throw away 10% of the lumber you buy? I just think it's hard to stay in business when you do stuff like that. Part of the reason I was excited to get this trailer off the dealer lot instead of custom ordering it, uh, especially custom ordering it as a YouTuber, is they had no clue who was going to end up with this. So this is a, a really good case study of what an average trailer coming off the line is from Diamond C. If you, if you get a trailer from Diamond C, you might get something better and you might get something worse. Um, but this would probably be a good average uh, or case study on what you might expect. Well, what more can I really show you? I don't know. I think that that's a pretty detailed look at this trailer, um, what you can expect. Like I said, inspect what you expect. Um, overall, pretty happy with the Diamond C, and uh, I think it's going to be great for the landscape business. Uh, early Christmas present and uh, great end of the year uh, purchase uh, to propel us into the new year. and getting uh, more projects done um, I think it'll be great for the business and I think that I would definitely buy one again we'll see what I say after uh, putting it through the grinds putting it through the paces and uh, really putting this thing to work
Um, you can expect a future video, probably a year or so from now, uh, showing um, what, what other issues I have that come up, uh, if I need to warranty anything, how to handle that process. But honestly, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I think that uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna go, it's gonna do, and it's a trailer. Just like my Spartan trailer, you know, little, little things happen, little flaws happen. There's uh, always room for improvement on the build process, but uh, at the end of the day, it gets the job done, and that's uh, why I purchased it. It's a tool. So, uh, well, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Hopefully, it was uh, useful and informative and at a minimum entertaining. Um, I'm sure uh, Diamond C is out there watching this, so uh, I want to just say thanks to Diamond C for putting out uh, what I believe is one of the better trailers on the market. Like I said, it's hard, hard to, to get uh, quality with... Uh, and still be competitive in price. So I think this is a good compromise and a higher quality than the average Joe out there, the average trailer manufacturer. Um, but uh, you know, still some room for improvement as there always is. Um, but overall, I'm really appreciate this trailer and, uh, and I think it's gonna be uh, really good uh, for the business. And uh, I'm gonna be using it for the next five or 10 years. Um, I, I picked this up like any average Joe, went to the trailer manufacturer and purchased this. Uh, I did send this out to bid and I feel like I got a pretty good price on it. So you'll have to check out that other video if anybody's interested. Um, without anything else being said, uh, see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.